Oh, that's perfect. Welcome to This Fryer Bakes. Today I'm making... Today I'm making black cocoa flourless chocolate cakes. Uh, so what I've been reading online a lot recently due to this quarantine is that some people are running low on flour. So I'm going to make something without flour. Yay. So we're going to begin with getting some butter. All right, let's see. I always also cut my butter into cubes that are about the same size so that they can melt evenly, all right? The next thing, I'm gonna need 120 grams of bittersweet chocolate. And for this recipe, you're gonna to wanna to use a really nice quality chocolate. Valrona, Guitard, Kaibao are my favorites. <laughs> um, but uh, use whatever chocolate uh, you feel like you and your loved ones like enjoy. I would discourage milk chocolate <laughs> because um, it's just too rich and I think this cake is already rich enough. So the bittersweet chocolate helps balance off the um, richness of this entire cake. And then I'm going to need 150 grams of sugar. Oh, I don't think we have enough sugar. All right, and then I'm going to need 110 grams of brown sugar. I'm getting hot. So. And now for the cocoa powder. I'm going to use a mixture of normal alkalized unsweetened cocoa powder, but also black cocoa. Black cocoa will give it that depth and that um, sort of like Oreo-like wafer um, flavor. So I do a mixture of both of those things to create that little excitement. <laughs> a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put all of this over medium heat on our burner. And what's gonna happen is the butter's gonna melt, obviously, and then the sugar is gonna, and the brown sugar is gonna melt too. But then also the heat will help, sorry, but also the heat will bloom the cocoa flavor and make it more powerful. So we're gonna do that over here. And then, oh, that's easy. This is a really easy recipe, I didn't realize. <laughs> okay, so then we have uh, two teaspoons of vanilla. Boop, and boop. And what did I need again? I needed eggs. Okay, so I have four eggs in here. Can I get the compost bucket? Whisk my eggs together with my vanilla. Make sure everything is fully incorporated. All right, I'm gonna spray my muffin tins. And if you guys don't have nonstick, just pour some oil um, into a bowl, use your fingers, and then just go ahead and dab it in there. Okay, I think I'm ready. All right, so our chocolate mixture is um, ready. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it on this to make sure I don't burn it anything. Alrighty, and so what we see right now is that it's um, all melted and incorporated. Oh, and it smells like chocolate. All right, so I'm gonna introduce my eggs into this mixture. I'm just gonna whisk it in. And you see how the um, towel is used to hold my pot in place while I use my one hand to whisk, the other hand to pour. Okay, and now, so do you see that? It's very shiny, it's very black. Um, it looks like, like, you know, have you ever watched Spider-Man and there's that villain Venom? It looks like that, like this symbiote or something like that, so. All right, now I'm going to use an ice cream scooper to make sure that they're all uniformed. I don't know what kind of ice cream scooper this is. <laughs> so I'll do some research and then figure out what it is, um, but it's blue. Um, and it should fill up the, the muffin tins about halfway up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop first. To make sure I have even scoops, I'm going to use this and swipe it. And then also, do you see these edges? I'm making sure that they're not dripping so much, okay? And boop, 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 boop. <sighs> I would recommend putting Reese's peanut butter cups in them. Or an almond in the middle of each one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use fancy Reese's. 
We'll use fancy races if such things exist. We're all set with this, and I'm gonna put this in the oven at 375 for about, well, we're gonna check it at 15 minutes and see where we're at, and then I'll judge it from there because um, every oven is different. Normally, in my oven, it takes between 15 and 20 minutes, but we'll see what happens. All right, so now we're going to make a raspberry jam. The chocolate cake is quite intense and sweet. I want something very tart, very fresh and vibrant um, to balance it out. So my raspberry recipe is just a simple ratio. For every, um, how do I say this? <laughs> two, two to one, yeah. How do I, two to, so, so every, Two to one ratio. Two to one ratio, yes. okay, I'm correct. I'm right, Ross. Are we recording again? We are still recording. Oh, we're still recording, Ross, by the way. So what I do is a two to one ratio. So whatever, how many raspberries you have, just ha add half of the amount of sugar. So let's see how much raspberries I have today. What if you're not measuring by weight? Then um, panic. But also, guys, it also depends on the sweetness of your raspberries. The most common um, producer of raspberries is Driscoll Farms. and. This worked for me in DC. It works for my sister over in LA. So hopefully it works out for you. Okay, back to the big sugar. All right. Every um, raspberry jam, I put a lemon. So I'm gonna put about a whole medium lemon into here. And right now I'm pressing down to it so it'll be easy for me to squeeze. That way it helps unleash all the juices too. I didn't talk this much, by the way, Bake Off. <laughs> That's because I'm more relaxed right now. <laughs> okay, medium high heat, or I'm sorry, medium heat, medium high. I think my, my saucepan is pretty intensely strong, so I'm gonna do a medium high heat. And what you're gonna do is, um, when, what we're gonna do is we're going to cook the, the jam until it reaches between 115 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on that as I do other things. So I'm going to make a whipped cream to go with this also. And I'm adding a little bit of sour cream to it too. I feel like the sour cream gives it a good tang, um, a little bit more depth, um, and I really like it. So I hope you like it. Um, so I'm doing quarter, 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 quarter teaspoon coarse salt. Quarter teaspoon coarse salt. I'm gonna do uh, one tablespoon of vanilla. Um, I'm gonna do 12 ounces of heavy cream. All right, I'm gonna do, I'm going to do six ounces of sour cream. Let's move over here. Who gave you that great haircut? Oh, my brother David gave me this great haircut. Ding! <laughs> Sugar! I want favorite ingredient. Paul Hollywood's favorite ingredient, right? <laughs> oh, oh, that cake smells really good. Ovens are hot, in case everyone didn't know. So, we have our chocolate flourless cakes out of the oven. I said that correctly. Um, now, notice the dome and notice the cracks over there too. So they should be cooked all the way through. I, I've done this a million times, so I don't need to do the toothpick test. Um, but if you do a toothpick test, it should come out clean. Um, great. It's hot too, ow, oh my gosh, I have gloves for a reason. Okay, there we go, there we go, thank you. All right. A quick way of cooling down your jam, if you're in a rush like I am always, um, I put it in a flat um, surface like this. Yep, this, this trick comes very nifty if you're on a baking competition. Great, so our flourless chocolate cakes, <laughs> that's the name, um, are ready. They're cooled down, and this is the muscatharic part, taking them out of the tin. Um, what I found is if I bang them on all four sides and then like push it out, it works out the best. So I'm gonna do it over here so this catches it. It's like a bang. No. Oh, see, it came out. <laughs> okay. Yay! Great. 
Was it that cathartic? A few things about whipping cream. One, make sure um, everything is cold. So I put this actually all in the refrigerator beforehand. And also to make sure that um, whatever bowl you're doing, there's not too much surface area because then you're gonna have to try to get it all over the place and it's not gonna work. If it's more confined, like, if it's more confined like this, um, then it'll work out better, okay? And so, I'm starting off at a low and then going to high. Now we're at high. Okay. When I'm doing this, I'm seeing streaks of air going in through here, so that means we're almost done. I want to whip it until it reaches about stiff peaks, but I don't want to do it too much. Okay, beautiful. There we go. Awesome. How I normally serve this to the guys is I basically just dollop some of the whipped cream on here and then toss up some top. Well, um, Try brothers instead of guys. You're right. How I usually serve for the guys is that I just take an ice cream scooper and dollop some cream on here and I serve it to you guys again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's why you're laughing at me. <sighs> okay. Oh, but I'm gonna do some jam. Should I do jam first and then thing? Ooh, yes. So, how I usually do this is that I squirt on some jam onto the cakes, and then I do a dollop of whipped cream, and then a raspberry on top. So I'll just go ahead and do that, and then we'll fast. We'll just fast track this on video. smaller oh. I can't please people you're just saying okay fine I'll do it how you like um take that one off no it's fine they'll just go we're just going we're going real time because this real life happens that way okay fine it does look better that's how I feel inside and now for raspberry on top so these are my black cocoa flourless chocolate cakes, raspberry jam, and a whipped cream. So if you have no flour, you have no problem. Thank you for joining this Fryer Bakes. Very good. Okay.